Okay, so I'm going to point out a new landmark, all right? Right here. Right here used to be a platform, about the same size as that one over there, okay? Uh, and the reason it is no longer a platform is because last Sunday, uh, while we were exchanging hellos to one another, and, and I watched it on, on, the, on the replay just to watch, and I couldn't see what happened, but I could hear what happened because I was standing about right here, and that's right. And, and so I, I see Lana Davis. She's over that direction saying hi to people. And then when I say, hey, all right, let's start getting back to where we were, she's sprinting back this way. And she hit this thing and went down. I mean, I turned around and looked, and she was flat on her face. Um, and I, that's what I said. I went, oh, golly, are you okay? I, I, and I, you know, when I figured it was okay, as I looked up, and, and Dawn is back there going. <laughs> and I said, so should I be concerned about this or what? Uh, but anyway, I said, this has to go. And so yesterday... Uh, Brian and Jesse and, and uh, uh, Mike and, and a few of us just kind of got after that and uh, wiped it out. Uh, eventually, yeah, amen to that. It's gone. Um, Mike said, do we have any uh, tape to paint out a body image down on the ground? And I thought we, we could do that. I might call it Lana's place or something like that. But anyway, uh, just know that when we have communion, we're going to make sure we orchestrate things a little bit better so that we don't have, we had way, we've had way too many people fall, Okay. Uh, no, she, that's why she's not here today. She's, no, she's fine. She's fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. She is absolutely fine. She, uh, she did. She laughed. And they, they talked about it. Said she, Dawn said, she falls all the time. And, okay. But that scared me. Uh, I mean, just the sound of it. And then her leg, fat, it wasn't like this. It was like this. Uh, yeah. And there's no give on that one. Anyway, um, Welcome to Granite Lake Community Church. It's nice to see all of you uh, this morning and, and uh, uh, anxious for a, uh, a day and time of worship together and, and fellowshipping and, and just kind of getting our time uh, away from the world and in, in line with our God so that we can go back out into the world and impact it with his love, his grace, and his mercy. Okay, so let's pray and then we'll stand and we'll sing, okay? Father, we are grateful for this morning, uh, Lord, for the time that you've given us uh, as, a, as one of the fellows here. I'm glad about yesterday. I praise your name for the time with Jess uh, Hahn and as he shared his life with us. And we had breakfast in the morning. Thank you for Carol preparing it for us. Uh, Lord, and just the time that we had to laugh and to talk uh, and to be encouraged by our brother. Uh, Lord, and along that line, I lift uh, Jess and, and Carol up to you as they will be leaving this, I think it's this week, Tuesday maybe, uh, Lord, or maybe Friday, uh, going back to the Mayo Clinic and just ask for your healing hand to be all over Carol. Uh, Lord, may it be a, a, a simple uh, uh, thing, which it sounds like that's all it is, and that's a good thing to hear, uh, God, but just be with them as they uh, travel back and forth, God. Uh, and Lord, for the time that you give us now to stand and to worship who you are, again, let us uh, not so much just forget about everything that's going on in our life, but just allow us to give it to you. Uh, to lay it down at the foot of your cross and that we sing with a heart of gratitude uh, and gratefulness for all that you do in our life and will continue to do. So, Father, we love you. We thank you and we give this service over to you. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said amen. amen. Let's stand and sing a bit. Greatest day in history, death beating you have rescued me. Sing it out, Jesus is alive. Empty cross, the empty cross, the empty grave. Life eternal, you have won the day. Shout it out, Jesus is alive. He's alive. my sin away, oh, happy day, happy day, I'll never be the same, forever I am changed, when I stand in that place, when I stand in that place, 
free at last, meeting face to face. I am yours, Jesus, you are mine. And it's joy. And it's joy, perfect peace. Earth and pain finally will see. Celebrate, Jesus is alive. Yes, he's, he's alive. alive. Oh, oh, happy day. Happy day. You wash my sin away. Oh, happy day. Happy day. I'll never be the same. Oh, happy day. Happy day. Wash my sin away. Oh, happy day. Happy day. Here we go now. Two, three, and oh, what a glorious day. What a glorious way that you have saved me. I'll never, I'll never be the same. Woo! Good morning, everybody. We're doing one song today. How'd that, how'd that music sound? Because we got a new board. Everybody say hi to Gary up there. He's our, uh, he brought the board in. He's uh, been working and getting it all set up. It's awesome. So we thank you. A um, couple of announcements. Um, our group is still Wednesday downstairs, 6.30. It's a marriage devotional we've been going through. We did the introduction this last Wednesday. Uh, had a great time, and so we're going to start Chapter 1. So if you missed yesterday, last week, it's not a problem to come Wednesday and join in. So um, women's retreat is April 6th here at the church. We meet at 8 o'clock. They're going up to the cabin again. So... Um, I don't know if we got a sign-up sheet for that, Jennifer. We signed up for so we're going to sign up for that. Bill's going to talk a little more about that when we do the um, offering. So we'll we'll push that around. Um, other than that, that's all I've got for you. So let's uh, stand up, say hi to your neighbors, and then we'll get back to worshiping. Thank you. Oh, God, you are so wonderful to me. Oh, God, you are so wonderful to me. Because you opened my eyes to see and you set my spirit free to worship you. Oh, God, say it again. Oh, God, you are so wonderful to me. Oh, God, you are so wonderful to me. Because you open my eyes to see and you set my spirit free to worship you. Here we go. So I will always know how you love me so You made the earth and sky for me to see And I will delight in you For I found you to be true You are the greatest pleasure for me Here we go I delight in thee 
Put your hands together. Sing it to the Lord Jesus. Here we go. Oh God, you are so wonderful to me. Oh God, you are so wonderful to me. Because you open my eyes. Because you open my eyes to see. And you set my spirit free to worship you. Here we go. Hey. You, I will always know how you love me so. You made the earth and sky for me to see. And I will delight in you. For my love that did me true. You are the greatest pleasure for me. I delight in thee. Whoa, whoa. And sky for me to see. I will delight in you, for I found you to be true. You are the brightest pleasure for me. I delight, sing, I delight in thee. I delight in thee, sing, I delight in thee. I delight, sing it out now. If you love him, clap your hands. Give me an amen. amen. A big amen, man. We were here like eight hours yesterday setting up that system. Is it sounding good? It's okay? All right. All right. Very good. All right. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God, I just pray. That you come, Lord, and be with us, Lord. Touch our hearts, God. Build our life, Lord, with you, God. Just get a hold of us this morning, Lord. And build our life, God, with you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's just worship this morning. Sing it with me now. Worthy of a song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring, yeah. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you, yeah. We live for you. In Jesus' name, yeah. Jesus, the name above every other name, yeah. Jesus, the only one ever sing worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you we live for you sing it out holy there is no one like you there is none beside you there's not my eyes in one and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Worthy. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring, yeah, yeah. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Jesus, the name. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one could ever say worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you oh we live
worship you holy name. You're rich in love. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. Worship His soul. Kids, if you want to come forward, we'll pray over you as you get ready to dismiss you to go down to Children's Church. And um, I'm a baby. Way to hustle up here. And we'll also get ready to pray over our offering. Caden, you can't go downstairs with Children's Church anymore, buddy. Not. <laughs> he would be. He would be. All right, let's pray. Father, we are grateful for our kids and their families. We ask, Father, a special blessing over them as they go downstairs, that, Father, you would uh, continue to shine a light on who you are to them, uh, not just in this time frame with Children's Church, but each and every day that they see others loving them and encouraging them, and that, God, you are the source of that love. And so bless them, bless their families, bless the Alfred crew as they go downstairs and to work with them. Uh, Father, just cover them up with your grace, your mercy, and your strength. And Lord, for our offering, uh, Lord, as we get ready to receive it, may we give back a portion of what you provide to us that we would do so with a glad and cheerful heart and be held accountable to what you provide. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Head that direction all the way back to that, that middle school teacher over there leaning up against the fire grate. <laughs> I am going to, in a minute, pass around a clipboard, uh, one on this side, one on this side. And this side is going to be for the women's retreat, and this side, the clipboard, is going to be regarding the cribbage tournament, okay? Um, I've asked this the last few weeks. How many of you play cribbage? How many of you want to learn how to play cribbage? That way. 
this is for you then, if you want to learn how to play it. We'll, we'll have a special category for everybody that needs a little of assistance. But anyway, there's a clipboard here if you want to sign up to play. have no idea how many people will play uh, and sign up, but we wanted to just kind of launch this. Been thinking about it for a while, and it's time to at least see how it goes and then maybe establish it as something that we do all the time. We're going to do it in March, uh, during March Madness, the first week, and allow uh, us to enjoy that tournament format as well as just having some fun playing cribbage, okay? So this, this clipboard, women's, uh, this side, the cribbage board, when it gets in the back, I've asked Mike Murphy to kind of make sure it gets this direction and send it forward, okay? All right. Um, going to pray a couple of prayers uh, uh, over some folks. First of all, Jerry. Uh, is in the hospital, uh, has been there since Friday night. Right, Stella? Yeah, starting Friday morning. Uh, Stella, uh, Stella uh, and Jerry, neither of them had much sleep over the last several days, and he's in there with some uh, issues. I went with uh, them, uh, went over to see him yesterday, um, and uh, we just need to pray for God's healing hand to be on him. You know, he's a guy who understands exactly what his station is in life. He's ready to go anytime. Uh, he knows where he's going. Uh, and, and at the same time wonders why God is keeping him here, and it, I think it's because of his beautiful bride uh, still being around. Um, and so we're going to pray over her as well, and that rest happens even if it's 10 minutes when you close your eyes, that God makes it just a deep rest uh, to be restored. Same thing for Jerry. <laughs> He's in the new unit at Tri-State. Have, have you been in the new unit at Tri-State? Boy, it's nice, really nice. But I'm telling you what, a hospital bed is a hospital bed is a hospital bed. And it is not comfortable. Uh, and so you'd think that they'd be able to create a bed that would be comfy in that, in that situation. Anyway, we're going to pray over uh, Jerry and Stella and also Erica, who's been dealing with a, uh, a left ear that has some serious uh, pain in it, uh, taking her out of kind of daily joy uh, in, in many different ways. So we want to we wanna lift her up uh, as well and uh, that, that God's healing hand would be on it and that it would allow things to, uh, to go away and, and help, her, uh, help her daily life become good. JC? Marceline. Yeah, Marceline too. We will, okay? So join me as we pray over all these folks, okay? Father God, we are grateful for the, the awareness and the knowledge that we have to be able to bring these things to you, our joys as well as our needs. Uh, and Lord, we just uh, uh, are, are so grateful that you love it when we crawl up on your lap uh, to say what it is that's going on in our lives, even though you already know it. You just love it when we do this time uh, with you. So God, with that said, I just want to praise your name for all the good things that are going on in our lives and in this church, but also, God, for uh, the needs that we've just discussed. I think of Marceline, uh, who experienced a nice kind of reprieve from the pain and nausea, but now is kind of back in the middle of it. We just ask God you'd heal her up, strengthen her so we can see her again, uh, allow her to come back and be that greeting, uh, hugging face in the back. Uh, Lord, for Jerry and Stella, uh, God, I pray for your healing hand to be all over Jerry. Uh, Lord, to strengthen him and uphold him, uh, help his blood to be uh, leveled out and for the clots to go away, and that, Father, you would restore him and, and help him to just return home. For Stella, uh, for her rest, God, that you would, uh, for both of them, when they close their eyes just to kind of take a break, that, Father, you would make 10 minutes seem like eight hours uh, just to give them restoration uh, and reprieve from the physical as well as emotional um, uh, endurance that they're in, uh, God. But just your healing hand and your peace and strength be all over them. And for Erica, Father, we pray for her and her left ear and ask, God, that your healing hand would be all over it. Uh, relieve the pain. Make it go away. Allow her to enjoy uh, that, that, that silence that comes with no pain and allow her just to experience the joy that's part of her daily life with her family, with her husband, even at work and her ability to come to church. It's so good to see her this morning. And just ask your healing hand to be on her. Uh, Father, we love you. And we put all these things at the foot of your cross, knowing with full assurance that you're busy in each and every one of them and everything else. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said, amen, amen, amen. amen. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, the, the teacher and me, this clipboard is, which, which do you think this is? Oh my, I know, Logan, you, you, you can't go to that, yeah, absolutely, this side's a cribbage one, okay, oh no, cribbage one. All right, it's, uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to Caden for last week, uh, for uh, the time that he and I had to, to visit uh, prior to and then afterwards, and then, Lord, just the, the way in which God used him uh, to bless us, to talk about a difficult passage, especially when you're young, you're not married, 
And he talked about marriage life. He talked about Ephesians and, and that whole aspect of wives submit to your husbands. And then later on, husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church. Uh, that's not an easy thing for any pastor even sometimes to tackle. And he did a nice job uh, um, doing that, brought out some really good points. And so I, I want to thank Caden for that. Um, we, uh, before we get too far, uh, how many, how's your vocal cords? You still Okay. We're going to sing happy birthday to one Luis Jimenez. I see you back there. I see you back there. This guy hit that 6-0 number. Whoa. Absolutely. And uh, if you were in the prayer room this morning, you got a good chuckle out of Caden's prayer for his dad. And so, um, Caden, what do you think about uh, me substituting the name of Luis for that other part that you prayed in? <laughs> That's confirmation if I've ever heard one. So um, when we get to that part, happy birthday, dear Luis, we're going to say, because this is how uh, Caden prayed for him, he's not a spring chicken anymore. <laughs> so when we get to that, happy birthday, instead of Luis, spring chicken, happy birthday to you, okay? All right, happy birthday to you, happy to do the spring chicken thing, man. <laughs> Did not want to do it. Okay. All right. So um, well, this has got a little thicker wire up on top. I've got to get used to that one. Okay. Good. All right. So um, we're just a few weeks away from Easter, uh, Resurrection Sunday. Uh, and usually what I like to do is kind of uh, lead up to it with a bunch of different stories on our way uh, to the crucifixion and then to the resurrection. And so we're going to do that today. Uh, and, uh, and that is a reminder that God is returning for his bride. Okay? Don't mistake that. Don't forget that. Don't neglect the fact, the very real part of our faith, our interaction with Christ, our interaction in, as a disciple of Christ is recognizing that Jesus is going to return. Amen? Amen? I know that many of us don't like to think about that. We like to kind of push that out to the outer edge, to think, oh, do I have to think about the end times? Um, and yeah, because for me, tomorrow could be the end time. Any, any moment could be the end time. But in this regard, we're, we have a, a God who is looking forward to coming back for his bride, okay? But in the meantime, as we, as we sojourn around uh, on this planet until that time comes, I want us to talk about this, that our God loves a walking partner. Let me say that again. Our God loves a walking partner, all right? Um, from the very beginning when God and Adam and Eve, he found them where? Walking in the garden, and he loved to walk with them. And it was when he came looking for them that discovered that they were hiding in shame because of sin in their life, which is a, the enemy's best tool from keep, for keeping us from walking with our God, from strolling with him, from spending time with him. And um, that walking is part of what God enjoys in our life as a disciple. God longs to walk with you, not to be left behind. Re recognize, I understand fully, and I'm telling you that I know God never leaves our side. He can't look on sin when we're stuck in sin, when we're struggling with sin, when we're in sin. He sees still the righteousness of Christ. And so he, he longs for the confession and the return back to him. He's never left, he's never gone away, but we're the ones who have walked away. What he loves though is when he, we invite him to go for a walk, to go for a walk together. Um, Jesse and I, uh, we go for walks on a Friday. Um, and uh, this past Friday, we went again, and I love walking with your husband, Erica. I love walking alongside him and, and talking to people. We, we leave, and, and what I did notice, though, this time was his pace is a little quicker than mine, okay? So I have to kind of move along, and every now and then I kind of reach over and kind of pull him back a little bit, no. But I keep up, okay? But we end up, we walk over to the college, and what I love about it is we go straight to the baseball field, place that I spent a lot of time at LC. 
And we spend time talking about baseball and, and all of this stuff. And then, and then we walk around that campus. We w walk all the way around it. We crisscross inside it. We go this, that, and the other way. And we were out here on, um, I still don't know my streets. I've lived here for I don't know how long. But the street that goes right in front of the college campus is what? 8th Avenue. Avenue. We were walking along that. And we get all the way up to uh, just before where the corner turns and goes down this direction. And, and, and um, Jesse said, I'm feeling led. We've got to go this way. We're, we're going to go this way. And I said, okay. So we got up, and I, uh, he started moving some fertilizer. There was a big clump of fertilizer. And he starts tossing it around, make sure it gets spread out. And I thought, is that why we had to go this way? <laughs> and he said, no, I don't know why we're going this way. But God, I think we're going this direction. So we went over, and we sat on a, a brick kind of planter box, great big one. Uh, in front of the admin building. And uh, we're there for quite a while just talking about a lot of things. What I love about our, my, my time with uh, my brother is we talk about this church. We talk about his life, his family, mine. We talk about our relationship with Christ. It's, and we'll, we'll talk about other things too, but really what we're talking about is, is how's our relationship with Jesus going and how's our relationship with our spouse, our family, our coworkers, etc. And, and the encouragement that I get from that is phenomenal. That walk lifts me up. Our walk with Christ, Christ longs for us as a walking partner. And we're going to talk about that today. When, I, when our kids were all young, younger, little, um, we, we've always gone to the Oregon coast. That's kind of a second home for us. My folks are buried over there at Lincoln City. They're on a big bluff that looks over the Pacific Ocean. And I love going there and sitting down with a craft of coffee uh, on my lawn chair, watching the sun come up or any time during the day, and visiting with them and spending time with them. I get filled up with who they are and who, their influence on my life. And, and so grateful for Jennifer and each of our kids and now our grandkids. Um, but when they were little, um, and they weren't always uh, uh, keen on this, but I would try to wake them up. You know, after they'd gone to bed, I'd wake them up when I knew the tide was out. And it was pitch black outside. And I'd go in with my flashlight. Let's get up. Come on. Let's get up and go walking, looking for agates, looking for shells. Great time to do that. And, you know, I got this, oh, yeah, absolutely, Dad. Let's go. No. So, Come on. Let's do this. Let's do this. We're moving them around. You know, okay, let's go. And they'd finally get up and we'd go. And it was a stroll in the pitch black darkness with the sound of oceans, with hearing them waking up slowly but surely. And then as they had each, maybe not each of them had a flashlight, but they'd be spotlighting, looking for agates, and we'd find them. We'd find shells, and they'd get so excited, so fun to walk with them, to see their joy after I'd gotten them up. And I think sometimes that's a, an analogy to our time with God. Sometimes he nudges us. Sometimes he shines a bright light on us to say, come on, I want you up with me. Let's go. Let's go for a walk. I have some things for you to, to discover. But unless you get out of bed, you're not going to find them. Let's go. And so this walking with our God is something that um, uh, Scripture talks about. And we're going to look at it as an aspect related to who we are in our life with Christ. I mentioned that Jesse said, let's go this direction. He felt led that way. And as we were sitting outside just talking, this was the part that God had in store for me. Not only was he blessing me by being alongside my brother, but as we sat there, a couple of people came out of the admin building, and, and I hadn't seen him for a while. We hugged, we talked. But somebody who was very dear to my heart, her name is Lori Ruddle. Uh, she took good care of our teacher ed students when I was there. She uh, was somebody who made sure that uh, she was the mother hen. You know, and now she's, she, well, not now, for several years, she has been the president's administrative assistant. And as she came out, um, and she lost her husband uh, this last fall uh, and, uh, to cancer. And, uh, and you, I mean, the joy that her and I shared uh, together uh, was something I treasured uh, mightily. And it's what kind of kept me engaged uh, at the college. And so she came out, and it was just like, we just got up and we hugged and we talked for just a moment. Uh, and I said, I'll be in this coming week. And so she went back up there. And I sat down and, and Jesse said, I, that's why we came this way, isn't it? For that moment. Maybe she needed it. Because I was already uplifted. But God had in store for me an agate, a shell, that had I not gotten up to go walking with my brother, I wouldn't have, wouldn't have experienced that. 
Our God loves, to, loves it when we climb up on his lap, but he also loves it when we walk with him. Enoch, in the, in the Old Testament, in, uh, in Genesis 5, if you have your Bibles, I'm going to have you turn way back there, then we're going to come back to the New Testament, okay? Um, Enoch was someone who walked with God, was the first man in Scripture besides Adam th that walked in a, in a passionate way over 300 years, all right, that he walked with God. In, in chapter 5 of Genesis, we're going to read starting in verse 21, okay? And I want you to pay attention. This is just a couple of verses, three or four verses in here, and I want you to see what's repeated twice, okay? It says in verse 21 of chapter 5 in Genesis, and Enoch lived 65 years and became the father of Methuselah. Then Enoch walked with God 300 years. <laughs> I'm 68. I thought, I thought that was old. Uh, 300 years Enoch lived after he became the father of Methuselah. And he had other sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years, and Enoch walked with God. And he was not, for God took him. In verse 22, it says, Enoch walked with God. And it says it again. In, in the last verse, 24, and Enoch walked with God. And then it says, and he was not, for God took him. God took him up. And I, uh, I, I wonder about that only because it's like, okay, um, if we walk with God, is he going to take us up? Is he going to snatch us? I don't know. But God brought him to a place that he wanted him, whether that is being taken up or whether that has been taken into someone else's life. God has an agate, God has a beautiful shell waiting for you to discover if you're willing to walk with him, if you're willing to stroll with him. So Enoch experienced something that many people had not experienced in his communion with God. It was special for God. When he spends time with you, when you allow him to come alongside and to walk with you, cognizantly aware of him being there, talking to him, praying, reading passage, praising him in song. He loves that. He loves that, loves that aspect of our life because our God wants to impact every aspect of our life. The more time we spend with him, the more time that we spend in prayer, in reading his word, in worship, and in fellowship. Don't discount this as we're gonna read a little bit later. This is so valuable in our time with each other for sure, but with our God. Phenomenal time frame for us to be able to allow God to come alongside us because he's right there with you right now. He was with you as you came in. Right now you're choosing to listen, to open up your Bible, and to sing and to pray, and that is a form of walking with our God. God loves to walk with us. God's point when he took Enoch up was to say, I love his passion. I love how he talks with me. I love the time that he spends with me. Come on up here. Let's do this some more for all eternity. We've had 300 years. Let's go. And he wants the same thing with you for whatever's left on this planet, for whatever time frame we have to be able to have a daily walking relationship with our God. Um, and as we draw, uh, you know, close to him, uh, I doubt, I, I, I mean, I'm not going to take any possibility away from God, obviously, but I don't know that we'll all be snatched up right away. But what he will do is provide us with an opportunity to be blessed and, and to, to be, be a, a blessing, blessing to, to someone, someone, uh, someone else. else. Um, so we just kind of looked in the Old Testament about somebody a long time ago who walked with God. Now let's go back up into the New Testament in Luke and we're going to read a very familiar story. This is post-resurrection. This is post-crucifixion. Uh, um, this is after Jesus has resurrected, okay? And this is an opportunity for us to look and see what it is our God, as he walked on this planet. Remember, Jesus walked everywhere. I've heard some folks talk about on TV, televangelists and stuff like that, talking about, you know, Jesus, if he were alive today, would probably want to be on a Learjet to get where he needs to go. <laughs> I, I really doubt that. If anything, he's going to be on a bus. If anything. If he's not walking, he's going to be on a bus. How many of you have ridden on a bus lately? Not a school bus, but on a bus lately. Not many. Yeah, I remember the bus rides. Brian, you've been on a bus lately? Yeah, last weekend. Oh, a metro bus. Uh, it was like a, a, a private shuttle bus. So there was two, like, two of each. 
Okay. That's different than a greyhound, isn't it? Yeah, no, 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 no. Greyhounds, greyhounds are fun because you don't know who's going to sit beside you. You know, you've been on, on a plane and you've got, you've got that seat beside you still open. And you see, finally, you see, you know, they're, they're getting ready to maybe shut the doors. And then you see that last person come up and you go, no, uh-uh, don't come here yet. <laughs> they come and squat down beside you. Yeah, I'm here. Um, but I think Jesus would either take the train or the bus because it's slower. It takes time. If he's not walking, that's the only form of transportation our God would probably have. Maybe a horse, maybe a donkey to take time to have the opportunity to walk with and discover an agate of life, a shell that is beautiful in the form of another person who maybe needs to be listened to, to love, be loved on, and to serve. So that's our God. So here, here we have him after the resurrection, and he chooses to go for a walk. And this is in verse 13, the road to Emmaus, okay? Again, Jesus has, has died he has resurrected, though most of the disciples are unaware of it. These two particularly do not understand what is going on. They're disappointed. They're sad, depressed, because what, I, what we thought we understood was going to happen hasn't happened yet. All we know is that Jesus is dead. So it says in verse 13, And behold, two of them, two of the disciples, not of the twelve, but the foes who were following Jesus, we're going that very day to a village named Emmaus, which is about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were conversing with each other about all these things which had taken place. And while it came about that while they were conversing and discussing and walking, Jesus himself approached and began traveling with them. Jesus comes alongside and says, I'm going to join you guys. He just kind of jumps in and starts walking with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are these words that you were exchanging with one another as you were walking? The thing I love about our Savior, our God, is that he always asks questions. He wants to know about you. Even though he already knows everything about you, he wants you to be engaged with him. And one of the best ways for people to be engaged is when you say, tell me about you. Let me hear who you are. What's going on in your life? And these two disciples, as they're strolling along, probably at a decent pace, maybe not fast, it says that after Jesus asked that question, and they stood still, looking sad. And one of them, named Cleopas, answered and said to him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem and unaware of the things which have happened here in these days? Are you the only idiot that doesn't know what happened? How can you not know what took place? And he said to them, what things? I love how Jesus talks how he asks questions. Tell me about this. What are you guys talking about? And he said to him, the things about Jesus, the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word in the sight of God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him up to the sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, it is the third day since these things happened. But also some women among us amazed us when they were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. And some of those who were went with us went to the tomb and found it just exactly as the women also had said, but him they did not see. Him they did not see. Still not believing what others had seen. Still not understanding what had taken place. They're still sad. And he said to them, O oh, foolish man and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and to enter into his glory? And look what Jesus does as he walks. He's with them. But what does he do? Beginning with Moses and with all the prophets, he explained to them the things concerning himself. He went straight to scripture. The value of this word in our walking with God is paramount. It is key to our understanding what's going on, gaining insight, bringing peace, bringing strength into whatever might be going on in our life. And they approached the village where they were going, and he acted as though he would go farther. And they urged him, saying, Stay with us, for it is getting toward evening, and the day is now nearly over. They sensed something in him, something that they wanted more of. He was bringing some clarity to their clouds removing the confusion and bringing some level of understanding, and they wanted more of it. That's what this word does. 
brings a level of understanding, sometimes hard to hear because it may touch on our toes. It may step on what we're doing, but it's exactly what we need. These guys needed to hear this, but they wanted him to come in for it was now nearly over. The day was nearly over. And he went in to stay with them. And it came about that when he had reclined at the table with them, he took the bread and blessed it. And breaking it, he began giving it to them. And their eyes were opened. And that moment, their eyes were opened when they began with the breaking of bread, when they went deeper in the fellowship moment, the time that they had together. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. (laughs) Remember the shepherds? Shepherds are out in the pitch black darkness tending their sheep and all of a sudden there's this bright light and singing of angels all just kind of all over and then all of a sudden it's all gone and they're left to themselves. I wonder what these two did. But it tells us right here, you know, if it were Bill Hain, it's, I don't think we really experienced that, did we? Did this guy just disappear? I think that's a hacky sack trick. Uh, That might not have worked. (laughs) Something happened here, okay? But these guys said, they said to one another, were not our hearts burning within us while he was speaking to us on the road, while he was explaining the scriptures to us? Were not our hearts burning? tapped into with this fellowship time, this walking time of conversing, of questions, of answering and and giving uh, Jesus information about what he asked about, and then hearing and reading the scriptures, and then the breaking of bread, the fellowship. And they rose that very hour and returned to Jerusalem and found gathered together the eleven and those that were with them, saying, the Lord has really risen and has appeared to Simon. And they began to relate their experiences on the road and how he was recognized by them by the breaking of bread. This experience highlights and really points to the fact that God loves to walk with us. He loves to stroll with us. He wants us as a walking partner that we are able to understand that when we take the time to slow down. And I know it's hard in today's society. It was hard in this society. And they had nowhere near the interference that we do today. But as a craftsman, as a sculptor, as someone who carves in wood or stone, it takes time and effort and purposefulness to carve out the image. It takes time and an effort to carve out time to take with our God, to walk with him when we need that, when we, when we allow him to stroll with us, when I purposely desire. Uh, and I, I'm telling you, you know, Jesse and I's time doesn't just happen. Either he texts me or calls me or I do him. And then we get the chance to get together. It doesn't just happen like that. I could go down and stand in front of uh, Jessica, uh, Jesse and Erica's house and just kind of wait, you know, and I don't know if that would happen or not. You know, the... <laughs> Berkeley might come out and go, what is this guy doing out here, man? Um, But with our God, he loves it when we take the time because when we walk with him in a manner and fashion that these guys experienced, we experience a strengthening of our spirit, of our fortitude to be able to finish the race well, to finish the race well. When I was in um, uh, college, I thought I was in pretty good shape. And a friend of mine, Chris Efforts is his name. Uh, he was a, uh, a ranger in Vietnam, uh, and um, he it was in b- ridiculous shape. And he talked me into going up to um, uh, Kendrick and running, I, no, Julieta, one of those two little towns up there where the, there's a road that goes out of town way up high. And, and he said, we're going to go on a, on a run, and there's a race up there. So I, I, <laughs> and I'm like, oh. Okay, I can run, but I'm not really looking forward to this. And so we go up there, and we, you know, they, we register, we get all of our, our signs on, and, and we take off. And, and we're running, and we get to that point where you take off up that grade. And I remember looking at it going, Chris, are you kidding me? We're not even warmed up yet. So we get to that grade, and we get all the way up to the top. Now, those of you who are runners, I don't know how many of you run, uh, but I used to run regularly uh, at, at college, and when we first moved back over here, I don't run much anymore. I try to keep up with Jesse when he's walking now, and that's my form of running. Okay? But I've never experienced the wall, 
Anybody in here when you're running? Anybody, has ever, have you ever experienced the wall? That wall of mental and physical, wow, I am done. I cannot go a step further. And I hit it. When we got up on top, I don't know how much further we went, but I hit the wall. And I was done. I was said, Chris, I'm, I can't go any further. I, I'm done. I can't go any further. And uh, he said, no, come on, just keep your feet moving. Just keep your feet moving. He was fresh as, as the morning. Just keep your feet moving. And he has bus, bu- was walking backwards, kind of high, lightly trotting backwards like this. Come on, keep it going, keep it going, just like that. And he nursed me through the wall. Never experienced that since. But I can only tell you this, that you hit that wall, and without him there, without my God beside me, without a brother or a sister walking with us as in fellowship, that wall can take us out. That wall can stop us from getting to the next agate on the beach. But when I hit that wall, he just nursed me through it. You can do this. You can do this. Come on. And he slowed way down. People were passing us up. I said, don't you want to keep up with them? Nope, I'm with you. And I got through the wall. And I'm telling you, there is nothing like that. When you hit that wall and you, all of a sudden you just feel like, whoa, wow, where's this coming from? God, you know, the body that God has created has allowed some endorphins to kick in. And you all of a sudden feel like, wow, okay, so we picked up, we passed a couple people. Which I, I looked around and I did this to him. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I didn't really. Um, so God is, 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 knows what's in store for us and understands that when we hit the wall, fellowship is vital. Fellowship on a one-on-one basis, fellowship as a, as a church family particularly is so important. When you guys start to uh, um, shake hands and talk to one another, I was encouraged. I, just, I went to Mike afterwards because the worship team started singing, and it didn't stop you. You kept talking to one another. I leaned into Mike. I said, hey, it's not just me they don't listen to. They're continuing to talk, man. This is all right. <laughs> the fellowship is part of this aspect of our relationship with God. But here's where it begins with. God looks for three crucial qualities in us as disciples and as walking partners. The first one is humility. Humble enough to know I need you. I need you. My position is at the foot of your cross. Confessing what is in the way of that relationship. He he loves a a humility. He loves faithfulness and devotion. And we're committed to him. We're committed to this. We're committed to loving and serving others. But this is where it also begins, and that is Psalm 46.10 says this, be still and know that I am. Be still. Not just for a brief time on Sunday, but find it a time during your busyness. And I know it's busy. Believe me, I understand that. But there's a time in which it's vitally important in order to have that that walking partner that I take the time to be still. And sometimes that's this, yes. Sometimes it's when you're in your car and you turn everything off and you're just with God. And then there's times when you're at home when you can shut everything out. Maybe it means getting up earlier. I don't know what it might mean for each of us. All I know is that be still and know that I am God is a key ingredient for a humble spirit, a devoted spirit, and a faithful disciple in Christ. And it brings a certain amount of peace to us to develop a walking partnership with our God. Be still and know that he is God. And in all the chaos that's going on, is still under his control. Every bit that's going on, when we look and go, this world is going to hell. Yeah, but our God is still in control. Whatever it is that's going on, he has his finger on the pulse. That's an assurance that we can rest in, that we can be confident in. So be still and know that I am God. The next one is prayer, that we spend time in prayer talking with him individually, with another person, because wherever two or more are gathered in his name, he is right there in our midst. And then as a fellowship group, as a fellowship time. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says this, don't be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and pleading, 
with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ. When you hit the wall, because the enemy knows that if you keep going, you're going to find the, the agates of life. You're going to find the shell that is beauty, the, the characteristic of a person that he's going to put in your path. But the enemy's going to put this in there and, a, and really work hard to keep you from walking through it. That's why fellowship is so important. That's why time together, watching and, and being part of whatever the men might have been doing, whether it was this, taking the trees down, getting that thing put up there with the, the heaters, all of that stuff. That's why that's important because it helps us to get over and through that wall. Prayer. Let the, let the peace of Christ guard your heart and soul so that you know when you hit that, that's just an enemy that doesn't want you to discover what's next when you get through it, when you get over it, when you get to the next place. Col- turn, to, turn to Colossians um, chapter 3. We've got two more passages to read and then we'll get ready to wrap it up. Colossians chapter 3. I've read this many times. I love the passage because it gives us uh, uh, the, the importance of God's word in our life, but also our clothing for the walk, our clothing for the stroll. <laughs> One day, uh, um, Jesse and I went. It might have been the first or second walk that we went on, and we, went, we met downtown, and we went out and walked on the levees, and it was nice all the way around until we started walking south, and um, a rainstorm But it wasn't just, it was a deluge. It was, wow, it was intense, you know, and and we got soaked, absolutely soaked. And it was months before we went for a walk again, man. (laughs) No, just kidding. (laughs) We never know what it is that God's going to bring on to us, so we have to dress appropriately to get through, to walk with him. So here it goes in verse 12, chapter 3 of Colossians. And so as those who have been chosen of God, those who call Jesus as Savior, those who count on him as our eternal source of life, who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving each other. Whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also also should you. And beyond all these things, put on love. That's a serious closet of clothing that we're called to wear daily, every day. When we go about our world, doing work, whether we're with our spouse, our family, putting on a heart of compassion and above all, love, which is the perfect bond of unity. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body and to be thankful. Verse 16. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. Let this word, with the power of the Holy Spirit, richly, not just hang out, but richly dwell within you. With all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to him, to God the Father. We're called as part of a walking partner to pray, to begin with by being still long enough to take the time to put on the clothing. And then in prayer, allow him to cover our hearts with the strength and with his peace to get through whatever the wall is. And then to allow the, allow the word of God to richly Dwell in here. And the only way that this can richly dwell is if we spend time in it alone and with others. With others. And here's the, the, the last one, and that is fellowship. If you want, uh, you can turn to Hebrews chapter 10, uh, and we'll finish up there. Okay? Hebrews chapter 10 uh, is another kind of common uh, passage used in sermons and stuff, but I'm going to just also... Uh, refer to Acts chapter 2 real quickly. When the, uh, when the early church was beginning to be formed against great odds, against great persecution, beyond what we can imagine. Now, in this world today, there's lots of persecution. You may experience it in, with friends, with family members, with co-workers, in which they kind of make fun of you or chirp at you or whatever. But there are places in this world that are experiencing the kind of 
persecution these early church members did. Persecution that included jail, persecution that included torture and killing. We haven't gotten to that point yet. I have a feeling we will. When the bride is either arriving or just before, there's going to be some serious one falling away. The great, the great apostasy when so-called Christians fall away because it's gotten too hard. We have a lot of softness in our life as Christians, in this, and particularly in this country. And there's going to be a great falling away because it doesn't feel good. Because you're not tickling my ears anymore, which Scripture tells us. Because people will turn away from that. So we have um, this need to be together. It says they were continually devoting themselves. This is not Hebrews, this is Acts. And they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the word of God. Okay? To the word of God they were taking in. And to fellowship this with one another. And to the breaking of bread and to prayer. They were walking with one another and they were seeking to have a walking partnership with our God. So in Hebrews chapter 10, we're going to read it, and you see it in the same way, and it may be written a little bit differently. Verse 19, since therefore, brothers and sisters, we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, we have, we have the ability to have direct access to the presence of God. The moment that Jesus gave up his life on the cross, that curtain was torn, the separation cloth between normal human beings not the high priest, but everybody else had access to the presence of God. You and I have that. What a confidence we have, not on our own, but because of what Jesus did for us. By a new and living way, which he inaugurated for us through the veil, that is his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith. I think it's important that when we read this, let us draw near with a sincere heart, that it includes that. It doesn't just say, well, yeah, I'm a Christian. I grew up in a Christian home or I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a citizen of this country, so I think I'm a, I'm a Christian. It's more than that. Citizenship with God involves a serious commitment to him, a joyful life experience because of our commitment to God that will help us dig deep roots to be able to endure whatever the wall happens to be when we hit it. Let us draw near to our God with a sincere heart full of assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful, and let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds. Let us consider how to meet. Let us consider how to get together, how to prayerfully spend time in fellowship with each other. Then it says, do not forsake our own assembling together, as is the habit of some. Even back then, there were folks who were not meeting together. Ah, oh, life's too busy. I've got other things to do. I've got to do this, 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 and this to do. Rather than saying, you know what? I can't wait to go and see someone. I can't wait to go and hear whatever it is the worship team sings, and I can get caught up in their praise time, that I can open up the Word of God and learn more about that burning that was taking place in those two disciples' walk with Christ, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day drawing near. Guaranteed the day is drawing near. And we don't know the time. The angels don't know the time. We don't know the moment. Ours is to be prepared. Ours is to be ready. And we are ready when we are, we stay ready when we are in fellowship with one another, when we are in his word, allowing it to dwell richly in our lives, when we are in prayer, and when we're walking with our God, strolling with our God, having the opportunity to do that with him. Walking slows things down. Next time I'm grabbing Jesse and pulling him back to my pace. Walking slows things down. Take a walk this week. I remember going up to Warren's classroom, Warren Beckman's classroom, when he taught at Camelot, sixth grade. First time I ever saw him do this was just encouraging because he took his kids for a walk. Kids need to walk, not to just run, but they went out and they walked around the fence line and then came back. 
walking with their leader, walking with their buddies, buddies hanging out and hanging, you know, going for walks and stuff like that. Walking slows it down for us. Walking encourages our heart, strengthens our heart, strengthens our faith, allows God to do some serious work on each of us. As you and I walk towards Easter, as we continue the stroll towards that moment in which Jesus is arrested, tortured, hung on a cross, dies, and then resurrects, take the time to stroll. Take the time to be still and know that he is God. Purposely carve out time to say, God, let's walk this out. Call on a brother or sister and say, hey, let's go for a walk. Let's go for a walk sometime. Be purposeful, be intentional, and be determined to walk this walk out with our God. When we do that, we have a stronger, more effective witness. We have the kind of witness that will win folks who are in need to hear a voice that isn't clamoring and yelling, but a voice that comes with reason and love and peace. That wins somebody to Christ. You and I, as we walk out into this world, as we choose to be a light, we are called to be the very fragrance of Jesus Christ. And remember, the only people he shouted at were the religious leaders. He took time to sit and listen to people, to ask questions of them, and not just speak at them, but to listen to them. What's their story? He could have gotten all over the Samaritan woman at the well, <laughs> but he chose to ask questions, chose to love her in the truth. And because of that, a huge number of Samaritans were saved. Who knows what shell you'll find this week? Who knows what agate you'll find and agates don't come shiny, do they? Agates have to go into a rock tumbler, man, and get all the cr crud off like he does with us to take off the old and put on the newness of Christ. So when you come upon somebody and you, you're thinking, is this what you have in store, God? Huh, not who I had envisioned. That person's there because it's an agate covered with crust and junk just like we are, except for the righteousness of Christ. As we go towards uh, Easter, I almost said Christmas, um, as we go towards Easter, walk with God, stroll with God, take the time to just be in his presence each day, as often as you can during the week. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. God, we, uh, we love you. We thank you so much for this time that you've given us to open up your word, to listen. I pray, God, that beginning with me, you would change me, change us. Make us more and more like you, shaking off and, and chipping off all the crud that just like an agate, that God, you would reveal the, the polished stone that is the representation of Christ. Help us to be the fragrance of Jesus as we go about our week. And Father, help us to be alert for the wall. And maybe I need to call, maybe we need to call somebody to say, hey, pray for me, I'm at a stuck point. But do that. Be humble enough to know I need somebody's prayer that we would, God, each reach out to one another and discover people who are in need, who need to be loved and served well. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Have a, oh, no, Mike. You're fine. I got something to share, though. Oh, good. Thank right. you. So, you know, hey, I, I, I'm so bad at this. You know, I need to b put a sign out that can be held because I asked the elders, I said, you guys, you start closing the service up. And what did I just do? Carly, I just, so I'm glad Mike has something to share. I'm you know, it was only about 45 minutes ago. He says, don't let me forget to have you come up. <laughs> right? Hey, um, you know, we all like confirmation when we, when we come to church, right? And um, each Sunday we go out here and we, get, we get, get together and we pray. And one thing we always pray is that the Holy Spirit will work through our pastor's heart and share with us. And whether it reaches one person two people or everybody in the in here we ask that you know the holy spirit does that and uh it reached me today because uh this morning um i don't know if anybody has a daily devotional this is a daily devotional we have in here and me and kim has the, have had this since our marriage and to be honest we probably haven't read every every one but 
throughout the 24 years we've read quite a few of them. And this morning I got up and I read February 25th. Rest in the presence, allowing me to take charge of this day. Do not bolt into the day like a racehorse suddenly released. Instead, walk purposefully with me, letting me direct your course one step at a time. Thank me for each blessing along the way. This brings joy to both you and me. A grateful heart protects you from negative thinking. Thankfulness enables you to see abundance I shower upon you daily. Your prayers and petitions are winged into heaven's throne room where they are permeated with thanksgivings. In everything, give thanks, for this is my will for you. So as I'm listening to Bill's prayer uh, sermon today, and I'm thinking, walk with Jesus, and he talks about the end times. I don't want to walk, be out there walking when the end time comes and he's not there. He's behind me, or I've left him or it's just me and Kim or somebody walking. I want to be walking with him when that time comes because I know if he's with me, I've got that coverance, and I know I'm going in a better place than I am. So I just challenge you to always walk with Christ or walk with Jesse and Bill. (laughs) So, right. So, hey, have a great day today, and like Bill said, I just want to pray over, over this, and, you know, Lord, we just thank you for Bill, and like we did pray Lord God, your Holy Spirit always works through him, and his message is always, as we know, taught in the Bible and and speaks to us. And we thank you that he does that, Lord God. We thank you that we have this church, we have the fellowship amongst each other, and that we have that in our lives. And I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen.